three of my top five best friends I met on the internet and I met with that power dynamic where I was the content creator and they were the mod or the fan. Tuesdays and Thursdays on Twitch, come check me out. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What is up guys? I'm back from my vacation feeling refreshed except for the fact that I came back to an absolute shitstorm. I will do the vacation recap with a personal life update and everything soon, but I just wanted to let you know you guys have to check out the link in my description, the link tree with all of my spicy site links right now. I am just about to go get these titties bigger and better than ever and I have like so many sales going on right now. You do not wanna miss the content that I'm gonna be making during and after and especially not the content that I have dropping with Kristen that we took before because Oh, it's gonna be the hottest summer ever on my spicy sites and I cannot wait to drop all this stuff. But anyway, today, since I just got back and I'm kind of trying to, what's the word, acclimatize? Accl I'm trying to acclimate to working again and then also going through a bunch of personal bullshit. I have decided that I wanted to make a sit down talking about a certain topic video. And if you're wondering why there's a pair of dirty hiking socks here, it's because I just sold these and made an assignment and also did some dick pic reviews. So I've been a busy girl today. Today we're gonna be talking about fucking parasocial relationships. I have watched two or three videos on this recently and I wanted to chime in and I feel like parasocial relationships or like things that are not parasocial relationships that I have partaken in or I partake in have gotten a bad rap. I feel like a lot of things that are not parasocial have been labeled parasocial and then also parasocial relationships have been like kind of demonized in a way that makes the people who are in them, like the fans, look bad and then it also makes the parasocialese look bad as well as if they can control other people's actions. So first off, uh, parasocial relationships are defined by uh, those relationships that people form with like celebrities, especially in the sphere of what I do, content creation, because I'm not so much a celebrity that I'm so untouchable that I have like fucking secret service type people around me or like bodyguards and I'm not so devoid of any in touchness with reality and with the average man that it feels like you could never be friends with me. In fact, like YouTubers particularly, we're on the internet like pouring out our hearts and telling you all of our secrets and all of the things that are going on in our social lives. So you really do start to relate to them or relate to us and you start to feel kind of a bond or a fondness for them. A lot of people will stop right there with the definition and say that that's parasocial relationships. I would disagree. I would say that the parasocial relationship starts when it becomes unhealthy, when you start to think that this person is your friend without actually having a connection to that person, or you start to be too invested in their life to where it actually affects your life, or you start to be almost like a stan or a ride or die for them in an unhealthy way where you're like really, really sticking up for the person when you can't truly have any idea of what's going on in their personal life or who they are. You can't really be sticking up for things that they say or things that they say that they stand for as a person because you can't possibly know that they actually stand for that. Um, I think in my opinion, so I've talked about this a lot and I hate it when people do this, but in my opinion, the most annoying form of parasocial relationship is the one where you start to hate or love a celebrity for their political views or what are supposedly their political views and you can't separate the person which you do not know and you have to acknowledge that you do not know them with the art that they give you. Like, like if someone's in love with Taylor Swift, right? They're in love with Taylor Swift so much and they, they're like, she's the best. She stands for amazing things. She's a sweet girl. Like, no, um, you can think that maybe that's the case, but like you have no fucking idea. And that, in my opinion, is a parasocial relationship. Or even on the flip side, when someone gets really fucking pissed off because they find out a celebrity donated to a Republican cause or something they, they disagree with, or even P. Diddy type shit, where there's like some kind of illegal or mean thing that the person has done and then being like, I'm gonna, boy I'm gonna boycott Nike for their political opinion. I'm gonna boycott P. Diddy's music, especially if he's like your favorite artist or something. I can't imagine that, but if he is, you boycott him just because of something he allegedly did in his personal life, which you weren't there for, you have no idea. I, I get that there's like kind of a reason to do that morally that makes sense because you're trying not to give the person more money, 
but you have to decide at what point like you're stopping the listening of your favorite bands or wearing your favorite clothes, which hurts you way more than that like $10 you're gonna give the artist. It's just, it's really like a silly, holier than thou prospect to me. And I would consider that to be a facet of parasocial relationships that no one talks about. You are in a parasocial relationship, I would, I would say a negative one, depending on how you want to define it. It's kind of like a new thing, I would say. If you are, standing over a celebrity or a content creator and they don't even know you exist. Now, there's gray area here and I'm gonna talk about my experiences because I have to tell you three of my top five best friends I met on the internet and I met with that power dynamic where I was the content creator and they were the mod or the fan or in the case of Kristen, Kristen just like she was a cosplayer too and she was a model too but like she kind of looked up to my content in a way, like watched me like she was like a fan, you know what I mean? So like, even though we were equals, that was still like a slight dynamic where I didn't really know anything about her at first and just started following her because of her modeling. And she was actually watching my videos and getting to know me kind of as a person. My second best friend, Red, who does a lot of the management of like my whole empire now. He does so much for me. He like does analytics for all of my shit. He like reposts stuff to different spicy sites for me so I can be on literally every platform. He actually works for me and I pay him. And he's also one of my best friends and has been for over 10 years. I met him and Cold, my third best friend or whatever, who is often on my streams. They both are. Now I basically just with them all the time, Tuesdays and Thursdays on Twitch, come check me out. But they were mods on my channel and just started talking to Jay and then applying to be my mod and then they were just like on the streams all the time. And those are like my best, best friends. Like I've met them in person multiple times. Well, with Red, I have only seen him like a couple times in person, but like we have so many similarities. Like we both grew up in Washington and, and same with Cold, hundreds of times. I've seen him in person. We used to play Magic the Gathering in person. He's coming here and staying in my condo in two days. So like these people, they have somehow broken the barrier of parasocial possib possibility, <laughs> like a possible parasocial relationship into like actually a back and forth friendship. And I think there's levels to that too, because I have like 10 to 15 reoccurring mods, reoccurring subs, reoccurring people on OnlyFans that I talk back and forth to. I know them by name. I probably also know what their dicks look like, but I would consider them to be like strong acquaintances, if not even friends. And the reason it's not parasocial is because they're not looking at me like their best friend or like we need to be hanging out all the time in person and they keep that boundary. So I feel like the way to not venture into the parasocial realm and keep it healthy, I don't think there's any problem with you like feeling sad or feeling happy for a content creator's like content or life. Being excited if they announce marriage or being sad if they announce that something is going wrong in their lives or even like giving them a little bit of money to help them out. It's kind of like a community GoFundMe thing because you appreciate their content. The only onus on the creator is to kind of try to mitigate that feeling of parasocialness. And I feel like I've done a good job with that. Like I don't do the boyfriend applications. I don't have like a manager talking to you, forming like a deep connection 24 seven, being able to talk back and forth to you on my OnlyFans. It's like actually me and I would never be like, okay, let's, you know, I can be there for you all the time. I'll be your friend. I, I set realistic boundaries. And if anyone starts skirting those boundaries, I pull away from them and I make sure that it's more of like a business transaction at that point, because I think a lot of people are lonely enough to start getting their, their sexual gratification and their friendship from people online. And when you have that connection because you have nothing else or and no one else closer to you to actually do it in real life and give you that back and forth, the two way relationship, I think sometimes it can start to feel intoxicating because you don't have anything else. And so I get how you can go down that rabbit hole. I get how it happens because there's so many lonely people today. And it's not just like lonely, sexless men. It's like a lot of people just don't have a lot of friends and they feel closest to the people they watch on YouTube or closest to the people that they jerk off to or watch on Twitch. And I think that makes sense. As someone who's an introvert and doesn't make friends easily, I could totally see that being the case. It's just a little different for me because I've never been in that position where I'm totally alone or totally don't have any friends, you know? 
So I would say that's the only onus that the actual content creator has. And if you are a purveyor of content of any kind, which most people are, I think it's important to remember that those people aren't your friends unless they actually are your friend. And that means they take an interest in your life. It's actually them you're talking to. Perhaps you do need some like live one-on-one -on -one stuff. There can't be a mo monetary transaction there as the means for the only reason why they're talking to you. Cause you can still feel something for that person and they can still feel like a kindness for you, but you're never going to know for sure if it's a reciprocal relationship. And I think this is the problem that a lot of lonely men go down specifically on OnlyFans and other spicy sites is they cannot realize that the money is the only reason that they're being so nice to you, you know? And it's not a hit on the girls because it's a transactional relationship. That's normal. I just think that sometimes there's like a gray area where you don't know what the girls actually think. And sometimes the girls actually do like you. They just don't like you as much as you like them because they have other things going on in their lives and they are getting paid for it. So always keep that in mind. I hear my man pulling into the driveway and that means that my work day is up. So check out the spicy sites. Let me know what you think about this. And yeah, I think you can form real friendships, but don't get your hopes up because, uh, you know, I feel like you got to be in a certain place in your life to be open to that. And I don't feel like I could make any new close friends online anymore, but maybe I could, I don't know. There's this girl I follow, not a nerd at all, not really a content creator other than hiking aesthetic pictures. And she finds all the people that she hikes with on Instagram who are also making Instagram hiking stuff. So I think if there's not really as much of a power dynamic there, it can happen. Or even if there is a power dynamic, there's a, a strong shared interest and then it goes beyond the bounds of money. So yeah, let me know what you think. I love you guys so much. Look forward to um, vlogs from the boob thing. I'm gonna do like a try on haul of all of the clothes that I don't like right now. And then I'll do like an after of how it looks after I get the boobs done. I'm so excited. They're gonna look so much better. So you'll follow me along that journey. And then I'll also do the recap of my amazing vacation and what the fuck is going on in my life lately. Love you. See you soon. Oh yeah. By the way, I was just about to say, I'm about to take some thumbnails, but you know how I say I love you and all this stuff and like I appreciate you and all that shit at the beginning or at the end of the videos and like I take an interest in you. I really do take an interest in the collective lives of my followers and I do try to remember like names when I can and like appreciate uh, concur like recurring support from certain people. But like when I say I love you, it's more like I really appreciate your support and I feel a strong sense of like community, but not like a specific attachment to each specific person. Even though I do have like a little bit of a soft spot for each specific person whose names and usernames I see often. It's just like, I just really appreciate you. And I feel love and want nothing but happiness for you guys, even some of the haters, you know? It's just like an appreciation for you appreciating me, you know? It's, and I feel like that's, Kind of a beautiful thing. All right, I hear my dude's Jeep. I gotta go. <laughs> Bye.